So as we were walking uh, down the road, we're, we're just sort of walking in the, in the farm fields and we spotted a snake skin. It looks like a snake has shed its skin. Um, judging by the heat coming off the specimen, this must have been at least two or three hours ago. Who knows where the snake is now, but... Every once in a while, a snake sheds its skin. So the story goes, so the story goes. <clears throat> now see here all of these overgrown trees? Yeah. And a bunch of like, uh, stones? That's a pet cemetery. That's a pet cemetery. We're gonna go right now. No, we're not gonna go now. What? You said we're going to a pet but cemetery. But I wanted to see the pet cemetery. Me too, Noah. So Noah's having a meltdown as she does, and Jordan and I are going to go pick out some grapes. So Jordan and I are going to find a nice, healthy bushel and just seize it for our own personal uses. If we can find, look, there's the plane. We got these guys right here. Jordan, watch out for snakes, okay? This looks like a nice, sexy pile of grapes. Let's just, let's just go for it. Ah. These grapes were a, were a two-fister. Took two fists to pull it off the vine. Now we're gonna go home and wash them off and have ourselves a little grape jamboree. Yeehaw! <laughs> you okay? Oh no, honey. All right, I am super excited today and there's good reason to be super excited because today is barbecue day. That's right. Usually when I come to visit my family in Israel, they do barbecue. It's not often, but when it happens, it's awesome. Okay, let me explain to you how this works. This is this is a whole science. It's like it's really crazy here. This is let, let me show you all the different stuff we got going on. So my brother-in-law, Kafir, he's preparing all this stuff right here. And what they do is, first of all, I, I think I briefly mentioned it before, but this is how you do the barbecue. You use charcoal right here. And as you can see, Kafir is using an onion. He's rubbing an onion on the grill. And I don't know why they do this. This is about, this has to do with, uh, I think it's about ke keeping the meat from sticking is really what it's all about. But they do it every time. It's all about rubbing, as they would say, it's called bitzal. You rub the bitzal on the grill. Well, first of all, you got hot peppers and tomatoes, pretty standard fare. Over here is one of my most favorite things, truly delectable and True, something that people might find disgusting. These are chicken hearts. The idea of eating a chicken heart to me uh, seemed really vile and repulsive at first. Uh, my wife, one day we were we were grilling at her her grandfather's house. Her gra grandfather Sabasami, who you met before. So my wife says, "Hey, close your eyes and open your mouth." And for whatever reason, I decided to listen to her. I did. I closed my eyes and I opened my mouth and she stuck a big surprise in. And as it turns out, that big surprise was a chicken heart. Chicken hearts are, I don't know, they're like, they, they taste really, really good. It's like the best piece of beef jerky you ever had. And um, you can eat about a million of them because chicken hearts are about like this big. And so I, I was blown away. And from that moment on, I was, I was a convert. I loved chicken hearts. So we got the, the chicken and the hot dogs cooking. Everything's looking great, nice and charred. I really think that uh, charcoal is the way to go when it comes to grilling. You can't, you just don't get the same flavor, the same results with uh, anything but charcoal. I understand that charcoal is supposed to be bad for you, but you can't argue with the flavorful results of charcoal. That's the truth. 
something else we rarely discuss here but needs to be brought up flies flies are everywhere in israel they are just such a nuisance it has something to do with the dry heat but man they love coming out out of the woodwork especially when there's food so these little morsels right here are kebabs and it's just you take your meat and your onion and your parsley or whatever and you just make little patties and stick them on skewers so now kefir is actually cooling off the grill with a little water i guess it's too hot Things are too hot, we need to cool them down. Yeah, get that onion on there. My wife does the same thing when we're in New York. Shula, the wild feral cat, smells the delicious cooking char and waits patiently for scraps that she will not be getting anytime soon. There the hearts go. Put my heart right on the grill. Char it to black. Make me feel great. Now, Kfir, Kfir does something slightly different. He, he opens up the chicken hearts. He opens up the hearts before he puts them on the skewer. Um, Kfir's grandfather and grandmother, they do it a little bit differently. They just, they just skewer the whole heart. I guess this cooks the heart more evenly. Salting up them hearts. I'm pretty sure these are either liver or kidneys. And, uh, you know, liver is an interesting sort of organ to eat. It's, uh, it's bitter, but when you have it in very, very small increments, it actually has a nice flavor to it. So we're, that's about to go on a let. There's a real stigma about organ meat in America versus the rest of the world. Around the world, people eat the the organ meats of a variety of animals uh, without batting an eyelash. And yet, for some reason in America, it's like considered to be really yucky or gross or, you know, we're just not, it's something that we're not used to. And the truth of the matter is we're leaving a lot of good stuff on the table but because we can't wrap our, our minds around it. It's the same way that, you know, in America, uh, the, the thought of eating insects is, is vile, yet insects are a source of protein around the world. What do you think, Jordan? Uh, I think, I think cavemen will be happy about that because they eat insects. Noah is about to eat chicken hearts for the first time. We'll see if she likes it. Noah, here. You want to try some chicken hearts, honey? Yeah. Have a bite. It's yummy. <laughs> My little daughter eating chicken hearts. Taim? What do you think of hearts? You're having a heart popsicle? You like them? I definitely will. You know, I think I discovered chicken hearts way too late in life. Oh my lord, these kebabs are delicious. Mmm. Phenomenal. All right, here we go. Watch me eat chicken hearts. Look at these babies. Such like a coppery, minerally, you know, blood sort of flavor to them. Mmm. Big fan of hearts especially with some toasted charred pita. You just, you can't go wrong. You never expect to eat hearts until you come to Israel. Me and my dad are eating chicken hearts. Yeah. Yummy, delicious. Mm. Me and my dad, we're carnivores. Sort of. Sort of carnivores. Have a lot of reservations about that, but you know, when in Rome, when in Rome, eat chicken hearts. Kafir knows what's up right now as he's created a nice char on the pitas, which give it such a, there's something about the caramelized pita that gives it such a nice flavor. And what you do is you, you bust them open, you pack them full of the stuff that you, you love, whatever it is with the barbecue. And that is good eating right now. As the heat cooks the pita, you can see the pita inflate and rise, which is customary for a really, really good pita. 
So what we got here is a little chicken, we got some kebabs, and we have a little bit of chicken liver, and we're gonna stuff it in this charred pita and take a big bite, because that's how we roll. Right, Noah? Yes. This is absolutely the moistest chicken I've ever eaten, besides my wife's.